Hey everybody, it's Kyle from Pixelwave, and today we're going to be modeling a chair. Appreciate all you guys tuning in, coming back. I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be changing my format a little bit, um, just so that we can, or I can, um, get more of these videos out sooner for you guys. I currently own and operate two companies and have a five-month-old, so uh, finding time to just sleep has been difficult nonetheless. Um, record these for you guys, but um, I love sharing, I love teaching, I love just being a part of the 3D community, so um, I want to try to get these more of these done for you guys. That, and we're going to have a guest uh, during the UV portion of this that I'm, I'm going to be teaching, and in I guess recording the teaching with him, Matt Romo, he'll be on uh, in this next video, but uh, it'll, I think it'll be a cool little dynamic between um, student teacher and kind of the questions they're going to be asking as I'm teaching. Uh, might be questions that you guys have uh, as uh, you're learning UV. Um, so it'll be a cool kind of interaction, I'm thinking. Um, but uh, this video, we're going to end up uh, modeling a chair. It's something just really simple, um, just so you guys can get the workflow from modeling to UV and to texturing and then back to rendering. Um, so we're not biting off more we can more than we can chew, especially when having a student here uh, for the UV portion of this stuff. So um, this is the chair that we're going to be modeling. I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, actually, I can grab that. Um, let's see here. I'll grab the chair that we can look at. Uh, it's on the screen. You guys can see that. Um, I'll include it so you guys can download it if you want to work on that. Um, big thing is, is we need a model in scale. Um, everything is getting moved towards photorealism um, or our physically based rendering, PBR, right? Uh, and it calculates light in a physical way. Um, if our chair is like this big in, in a physical sense, um, lighting is going to be odd. It's not going to bounce like it should. Um, again, this is not, this is if you're going for something photorealistic and, and not stylized. Um, so everything, everything needs to be modeled to scale. I jumped online and just did a Google search uh, and, and took measurements on some other models that I have for what's like your typical low um, seat or low club chair. And I got these measurements, which was three and a half feet, three feet, and two feet, five inches. Um, or no, yeah. Three, not three and a half, three, five inches, two, five inches, and three. So we're going to kind of use this as a guide. I don't have dimensions on this. I would love if I did. Uh, otherwise, we could model to those dimensions. So we're going to kind of eyeball things from that standpoint, but we're going to use these measurements as our, our guide to get, uh, in a physical sense, um, a correct scale on this chair. Uh, so let's just dive in. What I'm going to do so I explain this to you guys, I'm going to break this up so we have um, a cushion. We've got this front piece that's kind of disconnected. We have these sides with the, the pads uh, on the each of the arms and then the back. The big thing is is we model this guy, we'll model the cushion, we'll model the back cushion, um, but the sides are we're going to be able to duplicate over these um, legs. We're going to be able to duplicate around. It looks like actually that might have a little curve where this is straight. So a lot of the stuff like the sides will create and mirror over, which will be pretty easy. Um, this I would normally do in Marvelous Designer. So I'd model out these shapes and then use cloth simulations um, to do and get a lot of detail in this. However, I didn't want to use a third-party program uh, for you guys. Maybe I could do another um, uh, tutorial on that, how to do, how I would actually do this. But we're going to try to get our, our best modeling done in Max, um, and then we'll end up texturing it in Substance Painter. Um, so first things first, let's start with this uh, front piece here. So I'm just going to grab, really easy, I'm just going to grab a cube. Boo, boo, boo. Let's just position it. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. Here we go. We'll get kind of a rough, again, eyeballing it getting kind of a rough thing. And actually, let me pull, I'm going to pull up my reference on the other screen. But I wanted something up so you guys could see it and what I was working to. Okay. So, pretty easy. We'll get about, it's not half-half, so it's not sharing the space completely, but it's about there. So this actually, technically, it needs to be like this, right? But we have, do we have our width? Got our width, so that's that. And then looking at reference more, let's create the sides, the side parts. So those, we actually have a little back. Let me pull this part off and we'll set the back up. So this is somewhere in here. 
And actually, if I hit F4, it goes in the wireframe mode. Let me turn this to a darker color so we can see the wireframe. So I can hit S on the keyboard and snap to things. And I'm going to snap the bottom of this guy to uh, the top of the arms. Yeah. And actually, let's go a little bit below because we have some padding that kind of runs like this uh, on this model. Hey, behave. Kind of like this. So we have this armchair side thing, and then we got this padding on top. So this guy will pull down, bam. I'm just gonna grab the top, oops. We'll grab the top up here. And I'm gonna be sticking with quad modeling. It seems like a dying art. Everybody loves their chamfers, loves their booleans. The mesh looks like crap. You need to learn how to poly model if you're gonna survive in this industry. None of these shortcuts. Um, okay, what's next? Uh, sides, let's do sides. So sides kind of come up. Let's do this, grab another box. And I'll kind of explain why I'm doing what I'm doing while I'm doing it, while poly, poly, uh, poly modeling. Um, so you guys learn. This is a really simple model too. So it's good for someone starting out. It doesn't get too complicated or crazy. So roughing in the shape, we're gonna have another, what looks like this C here. Looks like another shape on top. So if I go to edit poly, I can grab this guy, select the face, hold shift and move up. And we're gonna say clone to object. I think in, in uh, newer versions of Max, it just automatically clones to object. So we just have this face, right? Now I can, oh, let's, um, it inherits the pivot of this guy down here. So I'm gonna go up to this uh, hierarchy. We're gonna say uh, active pivot, center to object. Now, I could just grab this guy, this face, and say extrude, but it makes it hollow, which is what, if what that is what you want, that would be a good thing. Um, a lot of times, though, I just shell because it creates, um, it fixes any normal issues that you might end up having, so it won't be inside out. Sometimes if you extrude the wrong way, it'll be inside out, um, and then I can just control the height with it this way. So, uh, yeah. It butts up against the back. Yeah, and then the cushion will go um, over the, the side of this guy. Let's see if you look here. Um, you got the back, and then you have this, this side piece, but then the cushion, arm cushion, which is right here. And then uh, the top piece will come up and over that. So to block in, we'll grab these guys. We'll just move them over for now, <clears throat> just to get our block in. So what I want to do to create <clears throat> this piece here, uh, the cush seat cushion itself, is I want to use um, spline. So if I go into top view and we go into, uh, this is not primitive, shapes, we're going to draw a line out. I'm just going to draw the cushion from a top view. So it's going to come in through here. It's going to come out, going to come down, over, up, over again, and connect into this guy. Another fun thing about kind of doing some of uh, things like um, chairs, you know, furniture, it doesn't have to be exact. It's not, I mean, if the, the reference itself, pull it up, um, you know, things are kind of wonky. Things are a little more organic. So if something's slightly off, it's not like everything has to be super um, cut and dry, you know, mirrored and all that jazz. So uh, I'm going to use, again, shell. This will make it a thickness to it. And then if I go to Nepal or this again. So the one problem we have immediately with doing this is our topology. Um, uh, we're going to fix that in a minute because we're not working in quads, which is what I want to keep us in. Kind of looking at my reference, I feel like this needs to come out more. So let's do that. Let's grab this guy too, we'll grab this front face, and I'll snap it to that. So kind of keeping again, same proportions as this guy, I'm trying to stay or work within that. So now that we move the front out, I might have to push stuff back a little bit. So um, how do I want to do that? Let's grab this guy down below. We'll scoot him back. I'm going to grab verts up here. We'll scoot him back. And then we'll push the arms back slightly. So this does not have an edit poly on it. Now that's shelled, we'll do that. So snap down to that corner down there. Grab this guy. We'll grab the face. Snap down to that corner down there. OK. And then we'll delete this side. And we'll copy over. Okay, 
So now we need the back cushion. Same deal. We'll just go into front mode. I will do, let me get rid of the grid. Um, bring this down. Okay, so let me do another thing. Same thing. We'll go line. We'll draw it up and above. Does it go? Yeah, it goes all the way out to the sides. So we'll go like this. Boop, 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 boop. Pretty easy. And then we'll fix the quads or the non-quad. Non we'll fix all that stuff. So this edge here isn't par parallel to that. So uh, we can either just use vertex in the line mode or we can right click and say convert to edit spline. And same deal kind of gives us these options. Okay, so same deal, shell this guy, move him back. And looking at the reference, I'm gonna go into perspective mode. Oh, how's everything looking? Uh, it's looking like it should. Okay, maybe we need some, this guy needs to be a little lower, but just being nitpicky at this point. And we need a back. What do we wanna do for the back? Let's, let's use our connect tool. So I'm gonna grab lines, or not lines, sorry, edges. Um, and I'm gonna use connect. We're gonna choose a little option here. We're gonna go to two and I'm gonna space them out. And then we'll extrude the center down and that'll give us the back of the chair. One thing important to remember when modeling, if we don't, if the camera's not gonna see it, we don't need the polygons, right? So technically speaking, we could delete this bottom face because no one's gonna see it, right? We're gonna look at the chair, everyone's gonna be going around this way. No one's gonna, unless the goal is to look at the bottom side, we don't need those faces, especially when we start um, turbo smoothing everything. Um, we're not gonna want, we're not gonna want a bunch of faces like on the bottom side of the cushion because um, that'll increase render times and um, using up memory, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, something to think about is do we need the geometry uh, at the end or in the end? Okay, so we got a lot of work to do still. First, let's um, let's start with cleaning this up uh, and getting it smooth and bulbous looking and kind of better than bedrock, I guess. Uh, first things first, right click, I'm gonna say isolate selection. You can also do that by hitting this little um, light bulb down at the bottom, clicking it on and off. And I'm gonna go to cut. And we're gonna cut, oh, let me do this first so you guys can see what I'm doing a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna say cut. We're gonna grab this guy. We're gonna cut things up so that we get quads on everything. I'll grab it down here. We got just gotta run this underneath. No biggie. The problem is this guy, center guy, is one, two, three, now this is a fourth, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. It still is a mess. So grab this guy, same deal, pull this guy down. We're gonna clean up the geometry too, so it's not all wonky. Okay, so again, this counts as one edge, and then this counts as another edge. So we need to split it across like this. Sometimes Max doesn't behave, so if it doesn't, if you guys go from left to right like this and it doesn't, add that line, go from right to left. Uh, you'll be surprised how many times you'll end up actually getting an edge uh, from these maxisms. So I'm gonna grab this top vert. I'm not gonna swipe because it grabs both. I wanna grab this one. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard. I'm gonna snap it to this guy up here. So that did one, but the other one's still jank and we'll do it that way. So same with this guy, I'm gonna line them up. We're gonna add some organic feel to it a little later with a noise modifier, so I want the geometry pretty clean until we get to that. So now everything is quads. So quad, 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 quad. Underneath, same deal, quad, 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 quad. Okay. Um, what else do I wanna do with this guy at this point? Let's check its scale. Um, let's make it a little poofier, a little bigger. I want it to look pretty substantial. Comfortable, comfortable. We'll go back to isolation mode. Okay, with quad modeling, there's something they call posts. Um, what they do is they it hardens edges. Uh, what, um, how do I say this? What Turbo Smooth is doing, and I, oh, I can't see my snip tool. Where's my snip tool? Is my snip tool, yay! Um, what we're doing is we're adding uh, these, these edge flows through uh, uh, edge loops. And it's gonna flow down like this, and we're gonna do another one here. And what what these are doing is when we do turbo smooth, it's gonna 
it's going to approximate an arch between uh, three different edges. So what it's really doing is if we add these two in, it's saying, okay, we're going to curve between these two. So actually, if I end up putting these edge loops out further, if I put them one way out here and one way down here, then this curve is going to be like, okay, it's an approximation of this. We're going to get something that looks really doughy. So the tighter we do these posts, so if I do them real tight like this, right up to the edge, you're going to get this little boop and it's gonna be just kind of a little bit rounded. So we have to play with the distances, um, but the closer we put them to the edge, the tighter that edge is gonna be, the further away, uh, the more doughy it'll end up looking like. So uh, let's put some like right here-ish, right? And I'll go through and I'll add some more here. So every corner we wanna harden. I wanna harden uh, this corner here, or I'm sorry, this edge, but I also wanna sharpen this corner. So I gotta add, one here, and we'll add one here. Now I gotta turn it to blue because you can't see the ones we're adding. Let's try that again. Okay, and I wanna harden this guy up here, so we'll add one here. I wanna harden this edge up on the left, so we'll add one there. And then I wanna harden that guy, so we'll add one there. And we'll do the same to the other side. And you get really quick at like seeing, once you, once you use posts a lot, about seeing where you should probably be putting stuff. Okay, now I want the top, so I put this one here, I want the top to be kind of doughy, right? So we don't want it really close, if I scroll in, we don't want it really close to the top, because if you notice the pillow top on the reference kind of like curves over. Um, so I want to bring that down a little bit, but I want the lower one to be slightly closer to the bottom so that that's a little harder. So it kind of gives us this more dome feel to it, okay? So checking all my posts, everything looks good. Okay, so let's look at a turbo smooth and I'll kind of talk through some of this. So, so see how we get this rounded edge that's nice and round? And actually, yeah, I'll show you guys. If I grab this guy here, um, I'm gonna add another loop because it's gonna approximate now. It's gonna harden it even more and I'll show you guys what that's doing. Okay, so you see how, you see how this edge here, oh, come on background. We're just going to use a solid color. Do you see how this edge here is more doughy and this one is more tight? I guess this is a good example here. Uh, this is what the, the difference between posts do. So when posts are really far away from each other, uh, we get this dough. When they're real tight or if we do multiples down, like stack them really close to each other, makes it real hard like that. I don't necessarily care for that look. Just wanted to show you guys. Um, so let's get rid of this guy. To get rid of uh, edge loops, we're gonna hit uh, control backspace, now that I say that. Yeah, control backspace gets rid of that edge. I don't think about this stuff anymore, I just do it. Teaching it's good, reminds me. Okay, so I want it to be, I don't want it to be so, like look at it again. It's like, looks really hard. <laughs> it doesn't look soft, it doesn't look inviting. It looks CG, it looks fake, right? I want some more pillow top to it. So let's back out of Turbo Smooth, go back to Polygon. And I'm hitting F4 on the keyboard to toggle uh, the lines. I forget the name of it. Wireframe. Damn. I swear, you guys, I've done this for a little bit. I'm going to pull this up like this to give us uh, a little pillow top feel. We'll grab the bottom ones too and do that. So when we Turbo Smooth it, it's not going to be like super rock hard looking and then I'm gonna add some ed edge loops here so when we turbo smooth we get some more information in here so same deal we're gonna go to uh, oh, let's get rid of this we're gonna go to connect let's add a couple and then we'll turbo smooth it again okay so still looks kind of not so pillowy yet. So how do I make that even more? Let's grab these guys. Try to go a little further with it. Should I grab these? Yeah, let's grab those. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So we're kind of pushing this a little bit. All right. 
starting to get there. We'll do even more like, this is kind of cool uh, because I want to break it up even more. If we go up here and we say noise, there's a noise modifier. I can push and pull things to give it some organic look. Now I'm going to go crazy with it so I can show you guys. Um, this is in the Z, so up and down, it's pushing and pulling. We can do it in the Y. If I go crazy with that, maybe X, maybe that'll look a little different. Yeah, so see how that's kind of pushing that? Again, going crazy just to show you guys what this does. And then we'll bring the scale down and it makes the repetitions more and more. <laughs> it's going a little crazy now, so let's back off so it's not so crazy. So if I go bigger with the scale, the waves get bigger. If I go smaller with the scale, waves get smaller. So we can add some wonkiness into it. I don't want anything crazy, but uh, I do want a little wonky to it. So let me get closer to this. We're just gonna do a little and a little with this as well, just to give it some more. Oh, you know what? I didn't push the front faces out. Let's grab those. Yeah, let's grab all of these. Um, I won't do it that way. I'll grab this. Oh, something cool. Uh, if you hold down Q or, or I'm sorry, if you keep hitting Q and toggle through up in the corner here, or just click and hold. If I, you can um, paint selection in, which is kind of cool. So let's paint selection these guys. Oops, try it again. I don't use this a lot, but it's really cool for uh, when you're working with high poly assets or lots of poly assets. And you know what? It's going through the mesh and grabbing other stuff I don't want. Okay. Um, sorry, was saying that's good for when you have like really dense meshes to paint stuff in like that. So let's grab this guy. Cool, I'm not really gonna see that guy, so we'll leave that. And I'll go back to Turbo Smooth. There you go, add the noise modifier. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Okay, let's move on for the sake of moving on. Let's do the same thing to this guy. Repetition, repetition. We're gonna do our, let me turn it this color so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna do our posts. So the bottom's really tight. Let's do two down there. And then um, we're gonna make the top kind of doughy, so I'll bring these posts in. We're not gonna leave them tight. We're gonna, so this would be considered tight. We're gonna bring them in more like this. And again, I'm not using connect. So um, another way to do this, if I control Z out, is you can highlight uh, the edges in the center, use connect and say two, and then this spaces or pinches them out. That would give you something that's super symmetrical. Again, I'm not worried about it because couches are kind of organic in nature anyways. So that's why I'm being a little more, I don't know, crazy with those. And then um, we need to do one at the side. Again, don't want it tight at the top because it's kind of pillowy. So we'll bring it down a little bit. Let's bring this up. Let's bring these guys out. We'll bring these guys out just to kind of give it a, a little bulbous of a look. Ooh. Okay, Turbo Smooth. Oh yeah, one thing with Turbo Smooth, as you can tell, these are not scripted. Um, let's see, how's that looking? That's looking okay. I want the top to be a little tighter, so back up. Oops, hey, okay. So I'm gonna hit two on my keyboard to go to edge mode. So yes, uh, one, two, three, four, and five on keyboards. We'll get you to these. Um, it's right above where your finger is for Q, W, E, R, T, for move, scale, you know, select, and all that jazz. So I suggest you guys learn how to use those. Um, so again, one, two, three, four, five. If I hit two on the keyboard there, we'll double click on this guy to make sure we have the entire ring, and I'll come up a little bit. And let's see if that's better. Okay, so yeah, not so, not so pillowy. Um, one thing I was going to say is I usually do explicit normals on turbo smooths. The, the smoothing groups seem to be a little better for that. Um, we can also crank iterations if you want more there, or let's say in the viewport, you just want one iteration, but you want it super smooth during rendering. We can click, uh, render, render, iter iter ugh, render iterations. We'll do something like four. So at time, uh, of rendering, it's going to go to four, but in our viewport, it's just gonna look like one. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, isolate display or isol isoline display. I don't really use much. I think it saves in the viewport, but if I, I'll show you guys, if I drag this out 
and I right click and say convert to poly and bake this stack down the turbo smooth edit poly box it like gets jacked so it's some weird modifier or option in a modifier that can screw things up so I tend to just leave it alone okay let's keep moving on keep moving on so this guy same deal let's do our posts this guy looks pretty tight so we're gonna keep them real close to the edges bam 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 oops bam so what I look for are these Y's. Let me see if I can highlight the Y. I can't really see it because of the flipping color. Okay, see this Y? This is what I'm looking for when I want a tight edge like all the way around. So, um, so there's a Y there. So like if I was to get rid of this guy down here just for shits and giggles, control backspace gets rid of that. Um, see how the Y, it's missing like this edge here. So visually, I'm looking for this Y to be boxed in, and I don't see it down here. So there you go. There's your little Y. Doot, doot, doot. Okay. So all is good with the world now. Turbo smooth. Um, explicit normals. Okay, see that? See this See this um, smoothing group? See how this down here? You get this weird square in the center, and then it looks trippy down there. It's not good. That's not good. Um, it's an issue with um, normals or smoothing groups. So if I explicit normals, pew, there you go. Cleans that up. Uh, I guess that's enough about that. Okay. Pillow top, same deal. Put our posts. Um, oh, let's isolate just so we get in here. So again, the bottom, it looks like, is really tight. So we'll put one real close. We'll see if one's enough. Might have to put a second one. And then we want to leave these real pillowy. So we'll put them real far from the edge. The back one looks pretty tight, but not crazy. And then let's pull some of these out. Pull this up, pull this out. Okay, and I forgot I need one up here. And the sides don't look too pillowy. The insides look a little pillowy, so we'll bring that out. Pillowy is a technical term, ladies and gentlemen. Explicit normals, okay. Did I do explicit normals on this guy? I didn't, gasp. Okay. So this, that's looking too hard. Ah, that bugs me, that's looking too hard. Sorry, let's go back. Let's clean this up. I'm gonna move these a little bit. So edit poly, two on the keyboard, get you to edges. It's just too, it's like, I don't know. If you looked at it, would you sit in it? I wouldn't sit in this. I mean, I would after I fixed it. Okay. I'll leave that back one kind of hard. Turn that back on. And isolation. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. So we don't need to do it on this side because we have it on the other side already and they're identical. So move it over. Done and done. Check that out. Same deal with this dude. But I want it, I don't want it like upright, like 90 degrees. So let me put it back. I always like to snap uh, my angles um, because let's say I did want something back to 90. If I don't use snap, so let's bring this guy off. And then let's say, you know, you wanna go like, okay. Oh shoot, now we want it back at 90. I have to like try to get it where it needs to be. Um, you can come down here and type in 90 and get it there, but it's just easy to work in snaps. And I work in five, or in increments of five. So if you right click on it, um, you can say what percentage is, angle. So I'm at five. And that just, I don't know. I needed it at 4.73 degrees, right? Whatever. Okay. Uh, isolate selection. We need quads. Let's do this again. I'm going to hit S on the keyboard to snap. So we snap to that guy that little vertice and we'll come back down. Ooh, that didn't work. Try it again. Okay. We'll clean these guys up too. So then we need to cut across. Can't forget that. Cut across. Okay, quads. If you don't have quads, Turbo Smooth 
can end up looking weird. You get weird lines and weird issues with smoothing groups and things. So um, always keep stuff in quads, people. Uh, okay, let's add our edge loops to get the doughiness we need. We could do one in the center. Let's just see what that does. I know what it's going to do, but I want to show you guys. Uh, we'll just do one in the center and see what that does. Okay, so I want to tighten that up. I want to tighten the bottom up. There's one missing here, if you guys notice. Oh, and I want to tighten this edge up, so we'll pop it there. And as you see, the stuff, you're just kind of playing with it, hoping you get what you, you need to get. A lot of adjusting. There's no, like, I don't know, for me at least, no, like, perfect first time. Everything looks good. We're done. Okay, so check this out. I just put one in the middle. Um, where is this? Is that it? Yeah. So it's going to it's gonna approximate these three. So it's going to do this kind of deal, right? Same deal on the bottom. It's going to go like this. So it's going to look super doughy, which I don't know if that's what we want, but check it out. Bam. That's nah, not too bad. Explicit normals. It doesn't look super cush, right? Look at that kind of flat, but... So I want, it, I want it thicker, and we need to pull some of the faces out um, altogether. So I'm going to go to scale. Let me see if I can get it in local. We'll scale this out more. Should I am. And then let's grab... <gasps> I can't do the pillowing effect. I guess I can with edges on this side. Ooh, Shutska. If I wanted to do that, that would work. Let's grab this guy. Too, if you guys are modeling, it starts like getting crazy where like you're zooming in and it's like going to weird things. Um, what I generally do is I'll grab an object that I want to work on and I hit P for perspective and then Z for zoom in and it resets pivots. So you're not like zooming in and out on some crazy thing off in left field. Um, so that's always a nice little trick. Uh, so let's grab these. We'll pull these out. Give it more of that pillow feel. Do, do, do. So F3, get us in this wireframe mode. We'll grab these back faces. I had a client tell me, do the thing where you can look into the matrix. What he meant was going into that wireframe mode. I thought that was pretty funny. Maybe it's just me. Um, okay, so problem we're running into, these are getting running into themselves. So intersecting was the word I was looking for. I can't talk today, you guys. Have a newborn and you don't talk. You know, can't talk. Sleep deprivation, it's real. Okay. Looking better. This There's gap I want to get rid of, so we'll go back. Let's grab all these vertices in the center, make sure we're grabbed them all. And then maybe I should rotate this a little bit like that so they're flat. It might cause an issue with these. So let's pull these out. Get it a little smoother. Okay. Turbo smooth that. Explosive normal is on. Okay. Looking better. Let me add a poly and we'll do an automatic smoothing group. So I'm going to say clear all auto smooth at 40. Let's see what that gives us. We're still getting weirdness down there. Let's go back. Did I forget an edge loop? No, it's there. Hmm. Okay. We will continue. Let's see what unexplicit normal does. Yeah, see, that makes it worse. See that black spot there? No bueno. We'll continue on. Clear all. Let's do 35. We'll go down. It almost made it worse, huh? Get rid of that guy. Okay, we're good. Let's go another iteration. Helps a little bit there. Okay. Uh, what else? The back guy. I want to pinch this at the top because the back's kind of at an angle, right? So let's do that. And right click, isolate selection. Let's add our posts. Uh, do, do. I want this kind of firm because this is the structure of the couch. It's not cushions or anything like that. So add all our posts in. 
We're not going to pillow this. We're going to leave it pretty hard. Turbo smooth, explicit normals. Mm, looks like there's an issue there with the geometry. Oh, no. You guys see? Check that out. Forgot a post. See how wonky that gets? See how nice this edge is? So back off with this, and we'll go to edit poly. Let me add my edge loop in. That should fix that. This is why I like to keep things pretty free form so you guys can see what happens when you're working. So if you guys notice, we're getting this stripe here. This is from uh, all of these, if I go back here, this is from these three being so tight. So one way to fix this is, if, oops, if I go turn off Turbo Smooth, go to Edit Poly, and I grab just these vertices. Let's see if I can do that without grabbing ones behind it. If I go boop, boop, boop. I can space these out. And that'll kind of help with that a little bit. So if I go back to Turbo Smooth, turn that off. See how it's gone? Isn't that cool? We get a little bit here too. We get a little darkness in there. I don't know if it's easy for you guys to see. Let's see if we can fix that here. If we have the room, it might be a little tighter. It might be a little harder. No, that should be okay. So I can grab like this guy and I can space these out a bit so that the, the edges go to where they need to be to, to tighten things up, but then they kind of fan out in other places, um, which will make a smoother result. So again, the further away from they are, the further that arch is that is approximating uh, when doing a turbo smooth. So if I, yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. I don't know if I can explain that any better. Some of this stuff too is just you guys needing to play with it. it it's um, quad modeling is, a definite skill that you have to master. This is pretty simple. Um, so we don't need to get too crazy with it. I want more billow. I want to, I need to go more extreme with this. So let's grab, I need to go like hardcore for looking at my reference. Ooh, moved it a little bit. Let's go crazy with it. That's another thing. I just like to go crazy with things sometimes and see what it happens. Because life. It's an experiment. Cool. That's feeling better. That's feeling a lot better. Those edges are a little doughy, but that's okay. Um, we're going to add some piping that's going to uh, make it feel like it has a little more structure. It's not in the reference, but I um, want to show you guys a little trick in case you guys wanted to do piping on yours or the maybe a chair that you're modeling. Um, has piping on it. Um, so anything else? Oh yeah, noise. Let's do a noise modifier on this guy. Oh, and I'll show you something else too. So much to show you guys. So noise, let's say um, I want to go in the Y and the X. Oh, I'm sorry, Z? Yeah, Z. See, it just adds. It like kind of like push pulls it a little bit. It's nice. And oop, the size. Wah! That's pretty funny. You can go to phase, where's phase? Is it here? Oh, I know, frequency. One of these will make it dance. Oh yeah, animate noise. Inch, 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 inch. I don't know, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for most of you. Another thing is fractal. Fractal is just a different noise type. Um, so you can set these iterations, which kind of change. I don't know if you guys have used fractal uh, for procedural textures, but um, just another noise. It tends to be sharper, less uh, cloud-like, more sand-like, um, maybe more stone-like. So it's a little more rough. Um, so fractal or not using fractal will give you kind of more pillowy effects. Uh, so yeah, that's that. What else? There was something else I wanted to show you. <gasps> oh yeah, um, this F222, 333, and 444. The more numbers, the more points we have to push and pull. Let's just go big and then you guys can see I've got, um, if I click on this, I have three or four points to control this way. Would that be Y? I've got four points, one, two, three, and four to control an X. And then again, four and Z. But uh, this is kind of like um, a soft, soft select uh, in Max. So I can grab just portions of it, right? So now that we're turbo smooth, maybe this would have been a bellow, better way to pillow it. Uh, so I can grab the center and kind of poof, puff that out, push it in. That's kind of cool, huh? 
And my reference, it looks like there's a divot. Wah! Let's change that. There's a divot in the center, so I can go like this. Squish that down. Pretty cool. So now I'm just going to go crazy with this for hours. But it's just, it's a chair. Okay. Enough. You guys get the point with that, right? Let's do it on this guy. <laughs> now I'm going to go crazy with it. See what you started. This is a cool tool, though, for these soft select moments. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, let's just put some gray on it so we can see it looking all glorious. Ooh, should I? Yeah, I want to make those pillow air. Those are looking too, now that I'm looking at my reference, which is probably good that you come back to things, these are looking too hard. Um, so let me let me do that, and then we'll tackle it again. Let me turn this down. Okay. Oh, yeah, I need to save it. Save it, you guys. Max crashes. You know that for no reason. If you don't, you're going to learn it. It crashes. No apparent reason. Uh, so let's grab these guys. Bring them up. We'll grab these guys on the sides, bring them out a little, a little bit. What the heck is that? See that on the top? Hmm. We'll see. We'll check that in a minute. I don't know what that is. I don't know why it's doing that. Because it's Max. Yeah, probably. That is so weird. Delete it. Um, I'm going to try something. Let's pull it off. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this um, Reset X form. I don't even know what this tab is. Utilities. Reset X form. Um, you have to bake everything down. So we have to bake in the, the Turbo Smooth. But um, sometimes that fixes things. So downside is, is you lose your stack. Um, I always pull a copy off to the side. So if I need to go backwards, I've got this. I just throw it on a layer and hide it, especially when modeling. I actually pull off large amounts as I continue to work. And I've got this like sequence of arms. <laughs> Let's say if it's something really uh, crazy that I can go back to if I'm having to bake things down. So, um, so actually, oops, I need to go uh, reset X form, reset select. You'll see in here X form, and then we go right click, convert to edit poly. Watch, <laughs> this might work. Uh, let's try this. Maybe I grabbed. Yeah, I don't know. That's so weird. Max is a weird beast. Did I have anything under that I selected? No. What if I grab the inside? Okay. I swear I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this because I want to keep moving on. Max is stupid. So let me show you guys another tactic. Soft select. We're doing it. So I need more, I need more stuff in the center here. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to add some, just like two edges. Got to tell you guys what I'm doing. We'll turbo smooth it. And then I'm going to go to edit poly and we're going to grab these guys here. And then um, the soft select rollout, we're going to say use soft select is a, um, a color gradient that kind of tells you what you're selecting or what you're grabbing. Um, so you can do this like surface that kind of deal, or you can just do edges. How many edges do you want to go? Um, so let me grab all this and it'll kind of, you know, give you the billowy without using the 4D thing, which is actually really cool. And I'm sad it doesn't work. Okay, good enough. I'm happy, I'm happy you guys. That's all that matters, right? Kyle's happy. Um, okay, one thing I will say, if you guys are using mirror, so let's say you have this um, in a cool like curved shape and you need to mirror it to the other side. So let's say this, I'll say a bend. Oops, let me save this so I don't screw that up. Um, modifiers, bend. Hey, I said bend. There we go. I need to do it in the X, I believe. Let's see if it's, there we go. So let's say we do this, right? Bake it down, convert to, add a poly. Um, most times I would just rotate this around if I needed the other side. So let's say if it was like this, I just would rotate it. 
if if you have to mirror for some reason, you need to flip your normals. You need to reset X forms, flip your normals. So um, copy this over. If I go to mirror here and we say in the X, we can't leave it like this. When you get it over to Substance Painter, excuse me, when you get it over to Substance Painter, uh, it's gonna look like it's inside out. Uh, so what we need to do is again, go to Utilities, the Reset X form will say Reset Select. And oops, go back here. Right click, say Convert to Edit Poly. And if we look now, see how it's inverted? So we're gonna say Flip and then do the same. Convert to Edit Poly. If I go back, no longer flipped. So again, how did I know it was flipped? It looks dark. See, it looks dark like that. The faces look dark. If I go back, la. Ah. So again, if you're using mirror, reset X form, bake it down, check um, your guys' normals because that's something a lot, of, a lot of newbies have problems with in the beginning. Okay. I need to hurry up because we already spent way too much time. Let me put this over here. Shabam. Okay. Let's do our simple little feet. I'm going to go to top view. And unfortunately, we just have to eyeball this guy. So I'm going to create a box, cram it into that guy. Super easy. Grab the bottom, put it in like that. How's that look? These look a little uh, taller. So sorry, Mr. Big Chair, we got to kind of get away from you a little bit more. <gasps> that would have been bad. Okay. So it feels more like this. That's feeling a little better. So as I talked about, let's delete faces we don't need. The biggest one we don't need is the top of this guy. This guy up here. We're not going to see it. You don't need that. If we turbo smooth it, you're going to have, I don't know, 30 faces, 45 faces in there that you don't need. And again, this is true to everything in our model. Like, seriously, I could go in, and if you guys are trying to save on memory, or um, I guess not render times, but memory is part of that, you can delete all this in here. It's underneath it, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you don't need all that stuff. Um, where's another good savings? Maybe in here, um, in the inside of this guy. You don't need that. Like, a lot of the stuff, you know, you're not, no one's going to see. You don't need those. So that's kind of a way to optimize. Oh, game engines too. Yeah, real-time rendering. Definitely want to be doing that. So got rid of that face. Let's um, add our posts. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Now, technically, I could use chamfer on this guy. But I just want to drill this home, you guys. Really, I think you're doing yourselves a disservice if you don't learn how to quad model poly model. So I say um, learn it so you can understand what it does if you're in a pinch. And then later on down the road, if you use chamfers, you can use chamfer. But at least you know how to do it properly if you need to. Um, so then the back has a little curve in it. So that's interesting. Um, so if I go... Let's do this. Let me go back out of the turbos. So my thing, I work in the lowest poly I can. I work in the, the least amount of polygons before I tar start uh, turbo smoothing. So add all your holes, add all your bends, add everything, then turbo smooth. Turbo smoothing is the result, um, the final result of a good model. You don't want to be like, I guess you could if you needed to, but you don't really want to be like turbo smoothing, pulling, turbo smoothing again, pulling, pushing, turbo smoothing again. Um, you, it just ends up really unmanageable. So uh, yeah, just try to work with a smaller poly if you're having issues and it, you're starting to feel overwhelmed by the amount of polygons and edge loops, um, back off a little bit, uh, work with less. Cause watch, this is gonna be really easy to set this. It's like got a little bend or like a little kick to it. Um, that's all you need. See, got a little kick, a little spam. It's cute. That's cute. So let's kick it over here. Okay. So I'm going to front mode. I want to make sure these line up. This thing lines up. This thing didn't because I eyeballed it. Kind of eyeballing this stuff. We could work on a center line, you know, and then mirror things over. I don't know. Is it worth it in the end of the day? Probably not. Okay. You guys. 
This is our chair. Looking kind of sweet. Um, let's just add a gray on it. Take a look at it. Ooh, that's not good. Isolate. Cool. <gasps> piping. I want to show you guys how to do the piping. If you don't know what that is, you'll know what it is after I do it. But look at that's looking pretty sweet. <clears throat> We're going to achieve a lot in textures. Um, seams we can we can t uh, draw in there if there were um, stitches for the leather chairs we could draw those in they could be modeled we don't need to model them which is kind of rad but uh, let me show you guys uh, the piping here oh hey save it if you haven't I hate autosave screws me up so I have to remember to save what we need to do if I go back pew, 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 we need to find this edge uh, this corner, this Y, remember the Y I was talking about? Uh, after it's been turbo smooth, because we want the fine details in the line that it moves in. So if I turn all this on, here's this Y still sitting right there. We're gonna go to Edit Poly, and I'm gonna grab this guy here. We're gonna double click, and it grabs all the way across. And we're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna grab all these edges. This is so cool. When someone showed me this, my mind was blowing. It's really fun. Okay. And technically speaking, you know, you guys, my wife says that it drives me nuts. She'll be like, technically speaking, you need to slow down because you're going to get a speeding ticket. So now I say it. See what happens. Sorry. Um, I don't even know what I was going to say at this point. So I'll shut up. Keep going. Oh, yeah, this is what I was going to say. Uh, we don't need to grab, like, maybe this one down there. We don't need to grab... Um, we're not going to see it. It's like on the underside, right? So I would just personally add the piping. Does add more polys? Add the piping to things that we're going to see. So we probably we'll see it on top. We're not going to see it on bottom. Let me kill that guy. Okay. We get it all everywhere. We did. So under edit edges, we're going to say create shape. La. Still doesn't make sense, but we're going to. I'm going to select both. I'm going to hold Alt and deselect uh, the the cushion. And look at we have this like network. Isn't that dope? And then we're gonna go sweep. Yeah, I'll check that out. I'm gonna make it small. Shabam. Shabam. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now, that's pretty big. Let's go smaller. But you guys see what I'm doing. And I like to go uh, generate mapping chords, real world scale. Um, that'll help in the UVs uh, later on. So check that out. That's pretty dope. Let's do it on this guy too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's the Y again. Grab the Y, double click. Oh, need to turn off soft select. Double click, double click. Let's grab all the way around the bottom. Now it's not technically at the Y, but I want to be able to see it. So I went up one. Mm, let's grab these guys because you may see them. You may not. Okay. Same deal. Uh, create shape. If you go into options, um, you go to smooth. Sometimes that'll pull off the, the mesh and corners. So always leave it um, linear. So same deal. Select both because sometimes it's hard to select the purple line. You're like, eh, eh, eh. So select both. Hold alt, deselect. We're using like a deselect method, a takeaway method. Oh, um, we need to grab the sweep modifier from this guy because we want them to be the same. We're gonna right click and say copy. And then if I grab the shape, we're gonna right click and say paste and we get the same size. For any reason, if you guys end up, is it the same size? Yeah, if it ends up not being the same size, we need to take this, if I delete this, we need to take this uh, shape and we need to do this uh, reset X form. A lot of problems can be fixed with uh, reset X form. I don't know what the math is behind it, but what sometimes what happens is we, we scale things in certain directions. Oh, excuse me. And it uh, screws the math up. So what resetting X form does is it, it, it tells it, okay, this is, this is the shape it needs to be. Um, so if things are squished or if they're out of scale, uh, reset your X forms. All right, lecture over. Um, after we do that, we need to right click, say convert to uh, editable spline, and then we'll paste back in our sweep. Um, so what else? We'll do it on this guy too. I don't think we need it on anything else. Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, let me knock this out. 
do this real quick for us. We're going to go super speed mode. Sometimes modeling can get kind of tedious. But there's nothing like a good model. I don't know if you guys saw uh, the other tutorial I did with, um, I call him Awesome because he's awesome. 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 Uh, and the model that he created is killer for the, the bag, the duffel bag. I mean, he even did the stitching and modeling, which is awesome. And ZBrush is a good tool for that. ZBrush can do things like zippers really well. Oops. Um, Marvelous Designer can do some cool things too with like a lot of this. Just gives you so much more detail when you do it in Marvelous Designer. Maybe I'll do that for you guys. Okay. I don't think... Did I get everything else? Yeah. We're not going to see the bottom, so I'm going to get rid of these. So same deal. Great shape. Paste. And... Cool. Go, go, go. Do I want it on that? Yeah. Why not? I'll just go through it all. Let's do it on these. Looking for the Y. Let's get the bottom. Let's do this bottom. Again, this tripped me out when someone showed me this. I was really excited. I was like trying to hand do these uh, lines before. Like do a live mesh and try to draw it on. Create shape. Paste. And, okay. Cool beans. All right. So this is going to end it. I'll try to get it up before Monday. Um, I'm going to have my friend Matt Romo jump on board. And I'm going to teach him basically how to UV with him along. Again, I want his questions. I want his fresh eyes. He's still learning, which is awesome. Uh, and I want him to ask questions that you guys might have. So I forget some some stuff. Like, And again, this is why I just kind of model and let it uh, let the video roll. Um, I want you guys to see the rawness of it. And things I remember as I'm working, I can do. Because um, it's hard to remember everything when, when you've been doing it a while. A lot of this stuff is just kind of me working and not having to think about it any longer. So anyways, um, I'm going to try to get this up before we speak with Matt. Matt, we're going to, uh, and I are going to end up uh, UVing this. And then uh, after that, we'll get it into texturing with Substance Painter. So um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.